Hi guys, welcome to very cold and snowy New Brunswick. We are getting a late winter storm today. That's Hi guys. uh. Welcome to very cold. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm getting a dirty look from behind the camera. One job. <laughs> I had one job, yes, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> it's a bit cold and snowy here today. We are in the midst of a major winter storm. So, friends to the south, uh, um, I know I've got some friends, uh, Sharon and uh, Karina and a few others in Nova Scotia. They're going to be getting the, the truly messy stuff, the freezing rain and the, just the ick. So it's going to be cold and wet and damp where they are, and it's just going to be cold and snowy and damp here. So it's a good day to put on a fire, sit down, and paint snowmen. It's a perfect day to paint snowmen. So I am all geared up. I have my brand new Decoart apron, the Deco Earth apron. I have a cup of very good cafe mocha, like I needed more caffeine today. <laughs> And um, I'm ready to paint. But before we do that, I gotta send out a couple of thank yous. Uh, one to Linda Safranco, thank you, sweetie, for everything that you've been doing for both me and for the group. We really do love and appreciate you. And uh, I got a lovely card, and I wanted to say thank you for that as well. And uh, to Sandy Barton, sweetie, I got your card this week. Thank you so much. It's so nice to actually get mail, mail. You know, you we get email in the daily, but. Um, it was just, it's lovely to find something with a pretty little stamp on it and open it up and, and just have this nice little hello from a friend, you know, at distance. So thank you so much. It was just a pleasure to find that in the mailbox this week. And um, we do have some great giveaways this week, uh, courtesy of the Stencil Studio and Dynasty Brush. Dynasty is off to NAMPTA in New Orleans this week. So the, it's a major trade show, the National Art Materials trade association and creativation show so it's craft and art materials at the show in new orleans this week the education classes and whatnot start today i believe and the trade show opens on monday so if they're in for a very busy week launching new products um, i was very fortunate that i got to sit in on a um new product review of everything that's launching this week so nobody else has seen it so because i sit on the uh, uh, creative consultants uh, committee it was a pleasure to sit down and go through all of the new product that are being launched this week i think you guys are going to be really excited and later on in the week i'll be telling you more about it because there's some really cool things coming up in the meantime Giveaways this week, courtesy of the Stencil Studio and Dynasty Brush. You're going to love this. We get a gorgeous little set of Dynasty Faux Squirrel Specialty Brushes. We have three of those to give away. And then included in that pack, you get a, a fun little Be Kind pouch, a couple of pin kits, uh, Stencil from Stencil Studio, and of course, there's always some goodies from us that we throw in as well. So Dynasty has been very busy the last couple of weeks. You've probably seen the Facebook posts of all the shoes that have been painted by various Dynasty brush artisans. Uh, there's been some really cute ones and some truly stellar ones that were just off the charts amazing. Some were very uh, contemporary and very wild and others were a bit more mainstream and that's okay. They were all phenomenal. The theme of uh, Dynasty's booth at the NAMTA show is the artist's journey, which I think is a really cool one. And they're using shoes to show you that. All of the neat things that can be done with Dynasty brushes and just how creative the people that use them are. So that's going to be fun. We're going to be seeing a bit of that coming off the trade floor. And our dear girl, Sandy, is she's in NAMTA this week doing product demos for Decorart. So she's going to be going live a few times in the next couple of days or in the next few days so that you'll be able to see what's new, what's coming up. So keep your eyes peeled on Sandy McTeer's Facebook page. She's going to have lots of cool things to show you. And in the meantime, we're going to sit down and paint snowman and something hot and sweet to drink and just enjoy the comfort of painting on a cold and snowy day. So if you guys are ready to get started, so am I. No man. Snowies. These these are just a lot of fun to paint. 
They are not difficult to paint, but they are a lot of fun and they're super cute. You can customize them any way you want. If you want to put one snowflake on, I know that the surface comes with one, um, but I can't just do one. I've got to do a bunch because that's just me. So um, I've got a couple of smaller ones on there. Now you can use almost anything. If you wanted to stencil them on, you can. If you want to use, uh, you know, some that glue on, that's fine too. You can do all kinds of fun things with these. They're very easy to customize. These are pretty simple, but to get that appearance, we need to add some texture to this. And I, I don't know if this shows up that well on camera, but these have very heavy brush marks in them. And it's those brush marks that help you create that, that look. So we're going to start with building all of that texture on this surface. Now the surface I'm using is this, it comes in three pieces. So you get this piece and then a snowflake to decorate with. And then of course you gotta have a nose. What's a snowman without a nose? And we're going to start with a little bit of gesso. And you're going to need a fugly brush for this. I like my fugly brush. Oh, but Bonnie Duncan has yet to receive her prize. She won several weeks ago. I keep waiting, but I wanted to let you know, obviously our post office is not doing well. Yeah, all of those have been shipped, so. I will have a look, and don't worry, Bonnie, if it, if it get, goes missing or gets lost, we'll make sure that you get something. So we have... I have no control over the wheel once it spins. Nope, unfortunately. My fugly brush is just is doing weird things. I know you would love new brushes for your 83rd birthday, but I cannot rig the wheel for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt him, though. <laughs> I can find a way. <laughs> but it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. So I'm using my fugly brush. My little one there seems to have bit the dust. Um, they take a beating, I got to tell you. These, things, these brushes take an awful beating for me. So I'm using Decorts Media Gesso. Any brand of gesso will do just fine. This is just my preference. And you're going to brush this on. Just one coat. Neatness does not count. And perfection is definitely to be avoided in this particular case. Don't you have a magic wheel? I do have a magic wheel. <laughs> we do have a magic wheel, but... That's for, spe spinning. that's for very special occasions and for very special people. <laughs> I'm saying all of you aren't special people. So once you have one coat on, you're going to take your brush and you're just going to make little swishes in it just to create some fine brush marks that are all going in different directions. Just like that. Now I'm going to turn this and see if it shows up. It's white. It's hard to tell. There. No, do not start a GoFundMe for a fugly brush for my mother. <laughs> she does not need your help. <laughs> GoFundMe? Drink for a fugly brush. For a fugly brush. Now, I have a drawer full of them. I yeah. Just, I... She's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding. I do have a drawer full of them, but I also use them till the wheels fall off. Because... They work fine even when the wheels fall off. But that one, I might have to just, you know, take the, the handle off and glue the ferrule back on. So I've got my texture on there. And because this is a water-based gesso, it'll dry pretty quickly. Sue Black, my birthday is on Monday. Perform your magic wheel, please. <laughs> well, it's Lucid to Matt's I know. birthday on Monday as well. Yep. Yeah. Denise, I thought all Tracy's followers were special. They are. Didn't I just say that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course they are. Blood, yeah. So I'm going to dry this really well. Yes, this one is just getting broken in. That's right. My fugly brush is just getting broken in. 
They have to break before they work right. <laughs> so the nice part about this gesso is it does dry very quickly. And so I have a nice little surface. And I think you can probably see all of those brush marks in there. I love the look of this. So once we have this in place, we're going to put a coat of warm white onto our, oh my goodness, I just dumped paint <laughs> all over my tabletop. Oops. Mother of pearl. I grabbed the wrong bottle of paint. And you missed. I not only did I miss, well, the paint was thinned out. I had used it for something else. Oh my Lord, what a mess. It's going to be a day. Well, I, at least I have warm white on the palette. It's and not, it's already thinned. It's already thinned, yes. Not in a good way. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So <laughs> I'm going to put a coat of warm white over my surface. And because we have gesso on here, it'll probably only take one coat to get good coverage. My That bottle of white, I do this quite frequently, I was down to the dregs, you know, that last little bit in the bottle, and um, I put a few drops of fast dry glaze in it so that I could use it. And then I forgot that it was thin, so then I shook the bottle to get it out, and I got the whole bottle, everything that was in it. Not good. So <laughs> I have a coat of warm white. It's going to be one of those days. <laughs> I always wear my paint. Oh, hello. I've <laughs> I've got paint all over all over everything. And it's paint it's always a day. I've never used warm white until I met you. <laughs> Somebody asked me today why I wouldn't use uh, titanium white for undercoating. And you can. I just prefer to use the the warm white, I like the tone of it. I also like the fact that it's a bit more opaque than titanium white. I was about to ask if titanium white was more transparent. Just a little, yeah. yeah. So it's just my personal preference and it has been for years. I have a tendency to gravitate towards warm white. So now we have our little snowy So I'm just going to make a fine line to indicate the ridge of the hat. I'm just using a graphite pencil and a fine line. Now you get to pick what color you want to do. Uh, I'm actually going to, I think I'll do the red one today. Really quite partial to the red one. Oh, JL's got a good one. What's that? Could you use texture paste and some crumpled paper to make the texture on the snowy? Absolutely. Why not? Absolutely. Half the fun in this is creating a texture that you like. I got coffee in my mustache. Okay. <laughs> it's gross. It's cold coffee. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Yeah, we are, um, it is snowing pretty good right now. Yeah, well, what, 10 to 15 centimeters? Uh, actually, they were saying 25 to 30 this morning. Fun, that makes going to work tomorrow morning fun. And then freezing rain. So, yes, it's going Did to be a fun day. So, we're going to base coat the hat with... A little bit of country red. Ooh, I've got too much water in this. <laughs> country red is one of my favorites. Now, 
if you do a lot of Christmas ornaments for craft fairs and bazaars and things like that, this is a really fast paint. These are very quick to do. You don't have to be uh, all that neat and tidy because of the texture. It just gives you a little more wiggle room. So I'm going to dry that real quick. And then we'll put down one more coat. And I'm not going to use that fugly brush to do it. <laughs> I'm going to put down another coat of red. Just so I want this one nice and opaque. There we go. Jeez. What? Can't tell if it's the cat or the dog doing running around up there sometimes. No, that's the cat. That's the cat? That's the cat. That's airy. The dog sounds more like you're throwing a body down the stairs. <laughs> And that one you can confuse with gizmo. Yeah. Yeah. But that, that's airy. <laughs> no snow in Penticton, B.C. <laughs> Rub it in, Deb. Rub it in. A little salt for the wound. <laughs> I love Penticton. It's a beautiful town. I wouldn't call it a city. It's a town. Yeah. It's smaller than Fredericton. So. Yeah. But it's a beautiful place. <laughs> Surrounded by mountains and in between two lakes. You can't go wrong. So. It's raining. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the fun part about this is that we're going to use a little bit of warm white to uh, put a stencil design on the hat. Now, the one I used is this one. This is that swirly background stencil. I really like this one. This is um, an M square and it's 80, M square 80 or 81, either one, because the other one's a circle, but it's the same pattern. So M square 80, this is the stencil that we're using. And I'm going to use a little bit of warm white, not the thinned out one that I dumped all over my desktop. I use a little bit of warm white and my stencil brush. Now, I want this to have a soft appearance, so I'm really going to blend this out well on my palette so that there's not a ton of paint in the brush. And then I'm going to use a fairly soft application so circular fashion, change directions frequently. There's 30,000 people in Penticton. Wow. That's more than I thought. That is a lot more than I thought. We have about that in, in the summer in Fredericton. Yeah. And then, then that doubles. Oh, we, we once go over 100,000 once school goes back in. Yeah, once school goes back in, we got over 100,000 easily. Well, and that's so just students. Well, I mean, we have... And faculty. Students and faculty. We have five universities here, so... <laughs> not a university town at all. No, yeah, not at all. Plus a provincial ledge. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think there'd be more. You would think there'd be more. So... A little bit of warm white. I want that to look kind of dry when I stencil it on. I don't want it to look perfectly opaque. What I love about this is by using that dry technique, it takes on a really soft and fuzzy look. It doesn't have a hard edged appearance and that works really well for our purposes. Now, the other little guy that I did, I used Bahama Blue or Aqua Sky, just some light blue with a little green in it, a uh, really pretty color. It's a nice variation. So any variation in color, you go with greens or blues or pinks or reds, whatever color combination you wanna go with, it will work on this. So I got that little red hat. So we're going to work on the hat. Now, 
one of the things that I have really been trying to do lately is to use these new colors with colors that I already have in my color palette, uh, just to make sure that I can get them to work. And one I've fallen in love with is this one. This is that Cherry Merlot, and it's a reddish purple. And that's what I used to shade this hat, was a little bit of that Cherry Merlot. It's a rich color, and uh, it works surprisingly well over reds sexy paint apparently it is the very sexy paint is it still classified as a red or is it more of a purple it's uh, it's actually a cool red a cool red yeah hmm. sexy paint it's it's a uh, neat color and it <laughs> <laughs> Somebody say something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Went from being sexy to being neat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's neat. And, but I will tell you, it shades purples beautifully. It's a really pretty. No more snow. Spring is here in Utah. Well. Rub it in. Almost motorcycle season. Yeah. Almost. Almost. I know it probably won't take much convincing, but I gotta convince him to go down to Moncton. <laughs> <laughs> hey Dad, you wanna go to a motorcycle never mind. I guess we're going. See how long it takes him to get in the car. <laughs> I saw a motorcycle and a spider the other day. Yeah, well, we're not there yet. It is That March. was Faye Reed. Yeah, well, Faye's down towards Sussex area. It's a little... They, don't... <laughs> they got special types of people out there. <laughs> they have snow tires for things down there. <laughs> So there, I'm using that Cherry Merlot to give that nice dark shadow at the top of the hat. And then the other color that I really, really am starting to love, love, love is this one. Um, this is Stormy. At, at first I wasn't sure what to make of it because it's a very gray, dark blue, but <laughs> I'm really loving how this color works. So I'm going to shade the left and right side of this face with a float of that. Look at that color. And I love that it catches into the texture. Nice little float of that color down one side. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And I like to let that color run out so that you've got that one third little open space at the bottom of the face. Claudette Hunter says she received a free bottle of Deco Earth paint with yes. her order. Yep. Is that what Deco Art's doing right now? Is Yeah, the, the boxes that they're shipping with uh, the new colors, they've been putting, tucking a bottle of the Deco Earth hmm. in with it so people can try it. I have the whole set. <laughs> <laughs> of course you do. And I've been playing with them. I like them. They have a really nice consistency. Yeah. They're no different than the Americanas? Or? Um, they're closer to traditions. Oh, okay. They are... Um, they feel more of a, a traditional acrylic paint rather than... They're still a liquid acrylic, hmm. technically. Um, they have a very creamy body. And they lay out really nicely. Hmm. It's a very smooth paint. Do they mix well? Beautifully. Yeah. Yep. So you get the primaries and make all the ones you want. Yep. So once that little section at the on the left and right are dry, 
I'm going to float right underneath the brim of the hat. I'm going to grab my mop. a spot there where I had a hard line. I didn't like that. There we go. So these little guys actually work up really quickly. So you can bang these out for um, craft sales and things like that fairly easily. So I'm going to set this one aside for a moment. And we're going to paint the news. The schnoz. The beak yep. and I'm using a little bit of orange flame that's my favorite orange for so many things I do love this orange flame the downside is that it's a little on the transparent side but um, in this particular case I'm not too worried about it so I'm going to put a coat of that on my nose The duck is dead. She killed the duck already? According to dad. Oh, yeah? The duck is dead. <laughs> like dead dead? I'm going to go find out. <laughs> oh, Deb. Deb Schwartz. Nice thumb ring. Isn't that pretty? I've got the thumb ring and then the little one on my ring finger is a honeycomb with the bumblebee. And then the thumb ring is the honeycomb interspersed with diamonds. My, my son gave that to me. So yes, I love my thumb ring. So it's got little diamonds in the in the honeycomb. And the little bumblebee there. And I, I'm in a bumblebee mood today. I have been designing all week and uh, so there's a bunch of bumblebees. So we have a nose. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to give it one more coat just to brighten it a little. There we go. So, Maze had her visit to the vet yesterday, and she is officially 55 pounds and almost seven months old. So, she has grown exponentially <laughs> to say the least so we're going to put a little bit of a bridge here across here i like just a little arch it's a gentle arch across you just need it so that we can put eyeballs in Nice little round eyeballs. I like that little bridge. It does make a big difference. Just gives him a little character. The duck has died. The duck is done. It is now another effigy. <laughs> effigy. Well, I'm going to take a picture then get rid of all the effigies. Okay. Got her a new toy today. She killed it already. She's in on a killing spree this week. She's <laughs> every one of her stuffies she has murdered. Miss Mays is busy. So I'm going to base coat those eyeballs with some lamp black. I find these little guys come to life when you paint them with a little bit. That little bit of a, a bridge in there just gives the face a little depth. So it's not just a flat surface. And it kind of helps bring these little guys to life. I do, however, want this eye to be round and not oblong. There we go.
So you can see when we put the nose on here that he comes together quite nicely. Like he's developed a little bit of a personality, which is always fun. I know, right? Little snowmen make you smile. They're so fun. Hello, Miss Liz. How are you, my dear? Liz from sunny Mississauga. It is not sunny here. <laughs> we have snow. A goodly amount of snow. So I'm going to, now that this is dry, I want to put a shadow on the bridge of that nose. So I'm going to use a little of that, that blue that we used. And I'm going to come past the edge of the eye a little and float across the bridge of the nose right there. And I just, I'm just coming past the eye a little. I don't want to come too, too far because then it creates that, you know, kind of a, a big arch, which you don't really want, but we want to get that little depth in there. I'm going to grab my dry brush. Now you can do this with a stencil brush or your favorite dry brush. Uh, you can use a mezzaluna for this. I'm just, I've got a little dome stippler here. I'm going to load it up with a little bit of the country red, that same red that we used for the hat. And we're going to just dry brush a rosy cheek right here on this side and the same on this side. Now what I love about having used that texture, that gesso to create a texture, is that by doing that, the color catches on that texture and gives you a, a nice soft cheek. So we get a little rosy cheek. So then we can have a look. And he's getting more and more character every time. Now our little guy has a He's facing in one direction, so our highlights are going to go on the left on this, or on the right side for this little guy. So I gotta find my smaller angled shader. <laughs> oh dear God! Yeah, he did kill the duck. This is this is the death toll this week. <laughs> She's murderous. She's mur effigies. Those are, <laughs> these guys are so twisted. They hang up the effigies, <laughs> the remains. It probably is a warning to other stuffies. <laughs> Be weary, those who end up. <laughs> Honestly. So I'm going to put a little highlight on the right side of the eye. So come in from the edge just a little and put small float of warm white. <laughs> Mine does too. <laughs> so a little float of warm white. And then we're going to use just a little dot of warm white for a highlight. Like so. We want this little guy to have a personality. <laughs> Isn't it your policy to paint the sides and edges of ornaments to keep them black or cork tark? Oh, I'm going to show you. I, <laughs> I, uh, I finish my edges a little differently. So I'm just going to clean up a little bit of graphite that's showing through. I'm not getting YouTube again. Here we go. So he's coming together very quickly, but we're going to add another highlight in. We're going to put a highlight on the hat. 
and I want this one to be dry like like the stenciling so I'm going to oh. use a very dry brush looks like it could be a baby polar bear it could be give me a little black nose so in a bottle of coca-cola <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little highlight on the right hand side of the hat right here, just with a dry brush of warm white. Doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to have a little curvature there. And it just gives this hat sort of a frosted look. So we've got our highlight there. So I'm going to set him aside and we're going to add a shadow to the nose. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of a schwalten. I know everybody is just like floored that I would use that. Had to get corn muffins out of the oven. Oh, yummy. Mm. I imagine it smells good in there. Do you carry the design over to the back or you base coat it? Um, you can do it either way. You can, can carry the design over onto the back. Or if you put it in black on the back, um, then it gives you a couple of options. You can stencil it and use it like a gift tag and put a to and a from back there. You've got a hundred different options and things you can do. If you wanted to change up the color, you could just simply, you know, get an additional nose made or just paint a nose in on the other side just to carry the design. All kinds of cool things you could do. So I'm going to put a float of asphaltum across the bottom of the carrot, like so. And as I said, neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all cost. And then I still have my dry brush. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of warm white. And I'm going to put a dry brush of warm white across the top. You could do this with a dry brush. You could float it on there if you want to. I just kind of like the dry brush because it just looks a little softer. So a little dry brush of warm white on top. Just gives the nose a frosty look. He's coming along nicely. So now we have the asphaltum on the palette. So we're going to start adding some other shading in. And I'm going to do that with a little bit of asphaltum. And I'm going to come up to the, the pom-pom on the hat. And I'm going to put a float of asphaltum across there. The great part about that texture is that when you put a float in, those liquids will follow the texture. And so it gives you an interesting appearance other than just a smooth, flat float. So it gives us that nice little texture there. And I'm going to do the same thing across the bottom of the trim. My float's not working very well here. There we go. For some reason, I've got a stripe. There. Much better. I just got curious about Coca-Cola. Oh? Yeah. Why? Oh, it was just in the back of my head. I, when you think Coca-Cola, mm -hmm. a lot of people think the polar bears, Santa Claus... Well, yeah, because they used it for their major portion of their advertising. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think Olympics. Oh, yeah. Specifically, the Canadian athletes. Yep. Yep. It's an American company that sponsors Canadian athletes. Oh, there is Coca-Cola Canada. Yeah. yeah. But yep. the first and last time Coca-Cola sponsored the U.S. team yeah. was 1928. Really? <laughs> wow. That's odd. In Amsterdam. 
Wow. It was also the first time they sponsored a team. Okay. It was the last time they sponsored the American team. Wow. The, okay, that's strange. And in 1976, the first summer games in Canada yep. was the first time that Coca-Cola sponsored the Canadian team and has been sponsoring them since. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And that's from Coca-Cola.ca. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. I was just curious. So. Neat piece of history. Cool. So I've got that nice little shadow on the bottom of the trim. And I'm going to use a little bit of titanium white. I don't often use titanium white. I think I've had the same bottle for you know, two years. I've lost count of how many bottles of warm white I've gone through in two years, but. So I'm going to, ooh, way too much water. There we go. <laughs> so I'm going to put a nice little float of titanium white across the top of that trim. And I'll do the same thing to the top of the pom-pom. Now I like the two colors to sort of meld. So if, when I float them, I make sure the floats wide enough so that it slightly overlaps the edge of the shading. So it gives us a nice soft transition. So it just makes things look a little softer. Uh, Sharon Klein's wondering what the blue was on the face. The blue on the face is this one. It's stormy. It's one of the new colors. What could you use instead? You could use uh, a little bit of Prussian blue or you could use Payne's gray. Either one will work. Payne's gray is a blue? It's a purpley blue, yeah. Purpley. So I'm going to take that asphaltum <laughs> and I'm going to float right over top of all of that blue just to tone it. <laughs> Is there a reason why they won't put warm white in an eight ounce bottle? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I want them to put it in a gallon. It would make my life a whole lot simpler. <laughs> you also want asphaltum in a gallon. I, I should have it in a gallon. You should have it in a 50 gallon drum. <laughs> so I'm just deepening these shadows all that blue with a float of heavily thinned asphaltum. I don't use it full strength. And it just gives our little guy some nice texture. That's what I should do. What's that? I'm going to go get a, one of those ketchup dispensers from McDonald's uh -huh. and fill it with asphaltum. <laughs> That could work. That way you always you just <laughs> plump, done. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm using a little bit of that titanium white just to float the bridge of the nose a little bit. And I'm also going to use a little bit of it down here on the chin just to overlap. Donna Baker's got a... A request. Sure. Uh, when you get a moment, can you show how to get the proper consistency of inky paint for line work? Sure. She has trouble with that. I can absolutely do that. So we're going to do the mouth. And I like this part. Look how sweet. He's got such a sweet face already. So I'm using a little bit of lamp black and the handle of my brush. Now this one is a 3 8 so it's, I don't know, the handle on a liner or a small round will do the job. Now I kind of like the mouth to have that sort of upturn on one side, so I'm going to put a dot there and there and there, and then I want them to get a little bit smaller as they come down. It just kind of gives him that, I don't know, cheeky little grin. So that when we put his nose on, 
He has a cheeky little grin. More of a smirk. I call it a cheeky grin. <laughs> <laughs> you have a smirk. <laughs> Always. So make sure that those dots are good and dry because we're going to use that small angled shader. Does the Coca-Cola taste different in Canada? I like Coca-Cola myself. I personally, glass bottle. Yes, ice cold. Ice cold. Yeah, I agree. I'm not a fan of the fountain. I'm not a fan of cans. No, I would. I prefer it ice, ice cold. Something really good about that glass bottle and uh, no, it, hot even summer in a day. Tall glass. Yeah. yeah. But it has to be ice cold. I love it ice cold. But we don't drink Coke in this house because my brother-in-law works for Pepsi. <laughs> 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 and he has for a, a great many years. So. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Pepsi sponsorship. Yep. Just saying. <laughs> Make it happen. <laughs> so we've got his mouth on. We're going to come back to pick up a tiny bit of that stormy, that blue. And I'm going to put a little float of it. And I do mean a little float. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> oh, I got a little piece of history for Donna Baker. Oh, no. Referencing Mountain Dew. Oh, Lord. Yes. Mountain Dew was originally designed to mix with whiskey. Was it really? Yes, it was. <laughs> to make it taste better? <laughs> to make the whiskey taste better. Specifically, moonshine. Okay. Hence gotcha. the name Mountain, Mountain Dew. Dew. <laughs> so I've got a little shadow because remember, this is their highlight side, so that little shadow is going to go to the left. So it's just a little float on the left side of each of those little coal bits. And then I'm going to just put a weak float of Eshfaltum over top of it, just to tone it like all of the other blue. There we go. <laughs> oh, now you tell me? So our little guy is coming together quite nicely. So I'm going to grab my scissors. And I'm going to cut out the trim hat on the hat from my line drawing. I don't really need the rest of it. So I just want to cut out the lettering on here just so that I can... And I'm going to put Happy Winter right there, right in the middle. I think that's fine. You could also, actually, I'm going to pull it over a little bit. Oof. Just a little bit. There we go. We got bourbon lovers in the chat. Kentucky bourbon. Yeah, we got Jack Daniels, Jim Beam. Bourbon is sweet. Yeah. Well, every time I go to, down to Decor's head offices, um, Tom insists on giving me a bottle of Maker's Mark. Oh, that stuff's good. Maker's Mark is pretty good bourbon. Considering that I don't really like bourbon, but... Um, it's one of the few bourbons I like. <laughs> yeah, Maker's Mark. Southern Comfort? Isn't that Too rum? sweet. Isn't that rum? No, Southern Comfort's a whiskey. Is it a whiskey? Yeah, but it's too sweet. Yeah. I thought it was a rum for the longest time. Yeah. So, I'm going to slip a little bit of graphite underneath there, and we're going to just, oh my goodness. <laughs> well, that explains the old hillbilly that was sitting on the oak barrel of their advertising. <laughs> yep. Oh, for Mountain Dew? Yep, once upon a time. Yep. A sweet, smooth whiskey. Bourbon. There's, there is one in Kentucky that's made out of honey. It's a honey bourbon. Yeah. Jack Daniels tried doing that too. Uh, 
but the one I tried was really good. Yeah. It, it wasn't super sweet or cloyingly sweet, mm. but it, it was very smooth. I can't remember who makes it. It's a small distillery. They're either in Kentucky or in Tennessee. I'm not sure which. For me, uh, it's rare for me to drink. Yeah. And when I do decide to have a, a beverage, it would be a, a good whiskey or yeah, it's not like maybe just a beer. Half the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Tracy or Renee can see us on YouTube. Maybe we should all start going to Facebook. <laughs> no, we can see you. I'm just watching to see the chat pop up. Every once in a while it cuts out and I don't see you. Buffalo Trace. I've heard of that. My son-in-law. A screwball? He's at Dragonfire Distillery. Okay. Oh, we'll have to look that up. Whiskey, bourbon, and moonshine at his Dragonfire, Dragonfire Distillery. Cool. Hmm. Screwball. Peanut butter whiskey over ice. What? Peanut butter whiskey? Peanut butter whiskey, apparently. Okay. So I'm just base coating. I've got a couple of little snowflakes kicking around here because, you know, I can't do anything with just one snowflake. <laughs> now, it would be fun. You could stencil snowflakes on. You can glue these on. They could be plastic. They can be whatever. I just want to get them white. I couldn't taste every liquor behind a bar. I tried that once. Yeah, no. I couldn't do it. <laughs> it was not pretty. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, especially when they put them in alphabetical order and you only get as far as white Russian. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because you're lightweight. <laughs> so, the fun part about this is that you can do these this lettering with these. Uh, these awesome Posca pens. I'm just in love with these things. They're just so much fun to play with. I can't see. I like where this conversation is going. Um, do we still have for the Highland Cow? Yes, we do. We just got them in. I'll have to update the site. So I've got, this is the, the black one. I like these ones. These are the um, 0.07. These are the the finest fine paint pens. And you can use any color. I'm just using black because it's, it's there. So these ones are simple. These are a great way, especially for doing this smaller lettering. They're great. But you could absolutely do this with a liner brush without any issues Bailey's chocolate and hot chocolate yum yeah I could see that homemade apple pie moonshine and I can I yes <laughs> yes you can attest to that one, I can attest <laughs> I can attest to that one and it's dangerously good it's when I was growing up in Germany, the, the big thing for us was a, a drink called popcorn, which tasted nothing like popcorn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Different name in German, obviously. It was just called popcorn. That was literally its name. But it was a, sort of a, it's a schnapps made out of apples and cinnamon. Oh, and, something about apples and cinnamon. Yeah. Very tasty. Mm -hmm. Lethal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because it's too tasty. You could drink too much of it with a, and then it all hits you at once. Can you see the YouTube chat, Renee? Yes. Yep, he yeah. sees it. I see it. I'm reading it. <laughs> That's how I got the uh, homemade apple pie moonshine. Yep. I used a gold Posca. Found that it bled. What caused that to happen? I have no idea, unless it wasn't fully dry. You do have to shake them well. That's one thing I, I have noticed about Posca pen. 
you do have to shake them very well. And how porous was the material? And there's that. Um, I'm a big fan. I love them. So I've got, see, I wanted to move that over so that I could do this. So I could have my snowflakes a little tighter in and not quite so spread out. So I'm kind of liking this. This is the fun part about these things is that you can decide on these elements before you actually glue them in place. A velvet hammer. <laughs> it's a drink with a velvet hammer. It's a good name for it. <laughs> so... One of the things that I like to embellish with is this. This is the Galaxy Duraclear's Galaxy Varnish. This one has that. It's got a really lovely glitter in it. And it works really nicely. It has a chunky glitter. There's a, a variety of, of sizes in it. So I like to just dab it on instead of trying to brush it on. Just dab it. And then that way, it's sort of the glitter collects in places. So it gives makes them a little chunkier looking. And you don't have to be neat and tidy about it. You can just dab a little bit on. It dries pretty quick. That's the, on the upside. There seems to be a delay between YouTube and Facebook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There always is. And always will be. Oops. There we go. So... I've got one coat of that on there. So now comes the fun part for me. I love this part. I use my gel pen, my black gel pen. And I like putting my scribbly lines and a little bit of texture at the base of this pom-pom. And it's just very scribbly. No perfect straight lines anywhere. I like the scribbly. And again, neatness doesn't count. So I just like lots of scribbly at the base and then just sort of let it fade out a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing around the edge of the hat. Again, it's just a scribbly line. It's not perfect. Remember, this is a textured surface. You're not going to be able to get a perfectly straight line at all. So why worry about it? And we want texture. We want that movement. We want all of that fun stuff in there. It's, it's the reason he looks the way he looks. Apparently in the South, it's either Dr. Pepper or sweet tea. Dr. Pepper is big in the South. Yeah. And I that's one I can't do. <laughs> I can do Dr. Pepper, but I prefer an A&W. Oh, Dr. Pepper is too sweet. Yeah. I prefer an A&W root beer. See, I, I would too. But Dr. Pepper is not a root beer. It's a cola. Is it? Yeah. Oh. But it's, I, I don't know, it's very sweet to me. I always I thought know. it was a root beer. No. Do those pens smear if they're not sealed? Um, I have not had that issue. I know some people have, but I have not. Uh, and part of the reason is that I don't usually mess with things until they're very, very dry, and sometimes that can take a while. But um, I usually seal them with a, a coat of matte spray or a setting spray of some sort before I do anything else. And can you shade the Posca pen lines? Yes, absolutely. So on the eyes... I like doing this because I just, I put a little line like this on the back side of the eye. You can do it on either side. I just like how it gives him a little bit of personality. And then I put that sketchy line across the top of his nose. And then I'm going to do the same thing all around the outside edge. This is not a perfect line. You don't want it perfect. These 0.38 pens are very, very fine. So it's not a heavy, dark line back there. It's fine and it's textured and it's irregular because it's catching on the texture that we put on. 
and it just adds to the look of this little fella. I love those imperfections. They're just more interesting. <laughs> Moonshine will knock you out. Somebody said something about... <laughs> Oh, Dr. Pepper tastes like a mix of root beer and Coke. That makes sense. I, I could see. I... <laughs> she went yuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just. But no, that, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, that, that's a good analogy. I mean, certainly. It, see, for me, I found it very sweet. Dr. Pepper started in Waco, Texas. Really? Hmm. Didn't know that. No. And Coca-Cola started in Atlanta, Georgia. I thought Dr. Pepper was prune juice. Eh. It might could have been. <laughs> it could have been. So I'm going to dry this real quick. This is another thing that I do all the time is I, I dry everything with this heat gun. So that may have something to do with the fact that I don't have any issues with the, the pens. Tastes Orange, like it. Yeah. Orange Crush is made in Georgia? Yum. Cool. I like Orange Crush. Orange Crush. Ice cold. Ice cold. Yeah. Noofy it, Screech is dangerous? Yes. That goes with that. The real... The real Noofy Screech? The real Noofy Screech or the... The touristy Noofy Screech. <laughs> the touristy stuff. Because yeah. the real stuff hurts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the stuff, stuff you buy off the shelf in your local liquor store. Yeah. It's tasty. It's just rum. It. It's. The real stuff is like homemade it's rum. It's the slosh from the bottom of every rum barrel that came into port. Yeah. Is what it was originally. Yeah. It, it was rum runner's rum. Yeah. It was the leftovers. Yeah. Uh, you know, Nova Scotia is so proud of the blue nose. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they were rough runners. Smuggler. <laughs> it's a smuggler ship for a period of time. Yeah. The <laughs> Newfies need their, need their booze. But then again, every ship on the eastern seaboard was a rum runner during the Prohibition. Oh, he's coming along. Look at that. So I've used my pen to texture a whole bunch of things. So, oops. Now I'm going to grab. That is going to be a rainbow shirt sooner or later. This one? Yeah, the sleeves got different colors all over it already. I know. So I'm going to use a little bit of my, I love this stuff. This is galaxy varnish. I love this stuff. I just, I love that it seals everything. It's a beautiful varnish. Whoops, a daisy. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit in. E. What? We have someone from Craigslist coming to pick up the husky babies at 2 p.m. today. Nice. Husky babies. Yeah, but somebody's dog at babies did i sh i showed you the picture of elka lamont as his dog yes <laughs> that is going to be one big shepherd he's so cute he's cute but bronson what a great name for a german shepherd that <laughs> explains a lot <laughs> bronson that's what she named him his name is bronson he's beautiful Got to live up to the name. Yeah, I have a feeling that is he's going to be a beast of a dog. <laughs> he's Huge. Gorgeous. He's twelve weeks old, and he looks like he already weighs thirty pounds. But he's beautiful. The face on him is just too sweet. One floppy ear. I love it. So, well, I'm not even on camera. I'm just talking away, slapping <laughs> varnish on. Hello, Bronson. Bronson. It's a great name. Yeah. So, I remember how I put the gesso on. I'm putting this varnish on the same way. Jeez. Because I want all the glitter, the sparklies, 
to show up and then I'm going to do the same thing to the news but I'm ran out of I ran out of varnish my husband swears to God good host iced tea heated up with a shot of whiskey for colds good host I, probably all the lemon in it yeah but with a splash of whiskey why not that'll put lead in your pencil yeah <laughs> you can see the sparkle already. Yeah, it can stay. I love this. It stuff. can stay over there. Yeah. Well, it stays there. That's the nice thing about this glitter. Like Charles Bronson? <laughs> As in Charles Bronson. Yeah. I love it. There's one badass dude. This is one badass puppy. He's beautiful. He's That's a lot of puppy to deal with. He's well, He's got to be 25 pounds at 12 <laughs> weeks old. <laughs> he's beautiful. To, just the size of him. Yeah, and he's an arm load already. That's, yeah. yeah. 12 weeks old. So, I am putting over the pan. I am. I'm also being very careful because this is fresh ink. But yes, I am putting it right over it. Ideally, I would wait a few hours, but I wanted to show you how cool this looks with it on. I love this stuff. Are you putting galaxy over the pen? Yep. Yeah, all of it. It's all getting galaxied. Now, I would normally take this out to the garage, hit it with a light spray of Decoarts matte spray, and then I would put it on. I was taking a chance, I'll be honest. But I was careful. <laughs> Does galaxy glitter wash out of beards? <laughs> We will never know. <laughs> we'll never know because we didn't put galaxy glitter in it. So, almost oh, dry. Look at the sparkle this stuff gives. I just love the sparkle of this varnish. It has just great, great shimmer and sparkle. And oh, it's just yummy stuff. So, I need to put my nose on because, you know. He needs a nose. So I'm going to use a little bit of my favorite. This is a Lean's Tacky Glue. Love this stuff. I like the clear one and I like the white one. They're both fabulous. So if you've noticed that I keep plunking the nose down in various places to get, until I see what I want, which is what I want. And I want the nose to come just slightly above that line or right on it. It just gives him a little more character. Ooh, hot bread. Isn't he cute? He's so fun. And then I've got, these are not quite dry. Let's dry these a little bit. There are no more badasses. <laughs> Gone are the days of Beaufort Puss Pusser? Pusser. Charles Bronson and Dirty Harry. Oops, it is. So I'm going to glue that big snowflake there, and then I'm going to add a couple more because it's me. More is better. <laughs> Adorable. I like snowflakes. Snowflakes are fun. You might have accidentally... Oh, why am I saying it? What? <laughs> I might have accidentally what? Might have accidentally muted. That's why you have no sound. And <laughs> me saying it doesn't help them. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> um, you want to think about that one for a sec? <laughs> <laughs> Just hold up a sec. Click the mute button. <laughs> that would be something I would do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm going to grab, where's my deco color gold paint pen? Somebody had asked about how I finish the edges. Now, you can paint them if you want to. I just find that more annoying than anything. I can never get them painted neatly. I always end up with paint on the front of the ornament or on the back or where places I don't want it. So, I started doing this a number of years ago. So I use a gold paint pen and I finish the edges this way. 
So I just go around and put a coat of gold paint on the edge of my ornament. Now, the thing is, is if you get a little bit of the gold on the front of the ornament, it's okay. It actually looks really nice to have that little bit of gold to finish the edge. <laughs> and they can't even read your lips. And they can't even <laughs> read your lips. No, they yep. can't. So. I'm tossing some gold on there. So a little bit of gold on the edge. It just finishes things nicely. Especially if you're doing them for markets and bazaars. It's a nice way to finish them off. I'll have to tuck in there when that glue is dry. But it gives them a nice finished edge. And then I would normally, I take these out to the garage and I'll spray the back with another paint. Either black or white. And then I use them for... Uh, tags and things like that for gift baskets and <laughs> so it's a fun way to finish them off now once these are completely dry when that varnish is dry you can put another coat on if you want to um, you can be selective about where you put it so if you want more glitter say on the tops of the hats you could put a coat there and sprinkle a little glamour dust on you can do the same thing to the snowflakes if you want to add more there's nothing to stop you from adding more and I am all about the more because I really love this galaxy varnish so if I want more glitter on the top of the hat I'll put another thick coat I actually had a question about the other one there with the blue hat with the blue hat okay what would you use for shading for that hat okay for the blue hat you can use mermaid tail um, I actually used this. This is one of the new colors. This is Mystic Teal. Um, this one is actually more of a green than a blue, but it shaded this Bahama Blue or the Sea Aqua uh, really, really nicely. I, it is such a pretty blue-green to start with, and then using this Mystic Teal to shade it, it was just nice and rich. I loved the tone of it. Everything else remains the same. So the nose, the, the face, the eyes, all of that all remains the same. The only thing that it changed was the base color for the hat. And then I shaded it with this Mystic Teal. So here's the two colors I used for the hat. I used Aqua Sky, not Sea Aqua. Aqua Sky and a little bit of Mystic Teal. Those are the two colors I used for this guy. And what would you use the opposite if you wanted a green hat? If... If you wanted a green hat, I would go with a darker green. Yeah, like a forest green. Like a forest green, yeah. yep. So you could go deeper and darker. You can go lighter. You could do this in a hot pink and then use, you know, one of the cherry reds or something to shade it with. You can go in a variety of directions with this. I mean, that color up there can be customized any way you want to. Purples, greens, yellows, whatever you want to do. That's the fun in this. And then when it comes to embellishing them, well, you can do whatever your little heart desires. You can add snowflakes. If you want to put holly leaves instead, you could do that. I'd have one of his eyes crooked because it's getting closer to spring and have a bumblebee on his nose. <laughs> <laughs> and sweat running down his face. <laughs> <laughs> so these little guys are super easy to do, really fun to paint. And, and really simple to customize any way you want to. I love the texture in them. It just adds a little bit to them. And the fact that the varnish is not put on perfectly smooth and it has that glitter in it just adds to that texture. So you get these really cute little winter ornaments. They can be hung up for winter or for the Christmas tree. Just They're just in general a lot of fun to paint and super easy. And you can decide which direction the face goes. You don't have to go in the same direction all the time. If you want, you can just paint the nose on. You don't have to actually use a dimensional nose. I just thought that the nose made for a cute little ornament. Good special rack for my group to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I did have a couple of questions from people uh, on how to load... Oh a liner brush to get that so that you get a good consistency what did I fix for dinner on a cold snowy day we are having leftovers tonight 
Um, so that means uh, homemade beef and broccoli. And uh, it also means we could have some butter chicken. chicken and uh, gumbo. <laughs> so, and gumbo. So gumbo. Yeah. I know, tough choice. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough on how I, I'm not going to say this is the only way to do this because it truly isn't, but I'm going to show you how I thin my paint for line work. So I'm working with a little bit of warm white straight out of the bottle. It's not thinned. I'm going to grab my favorite liner brush, which is a 10 aught extra long detail liner. And it's looking pretty beat up right about now. It's been busy this week. And I've got a little bit of fast dry glaze. You can use water. And this is my trick. I like using the fast dry glaze simply because <laughs> you cringe every time I crumple my palette paper. Oh, <laughs> I have a lot of it. So I get my brush nice and wet with fast dry glaze or water. And I put a puddle of it right here, just like that. So that I have a little bit and then I'll pull paint into it from from the main pile of paint. And it's still a little thin. The reason I do this is I start with the liquid and then build it up to where I need it. I find it easier to control it as opposed to trying to add glaze to it. So if I can lift my brush up and hold it, if it forms a drop, like what this one is doing, it's starting to form a bulge at the bottom, it's still too thin. So you pull a little more paint into it. And when you get it so that the brush looks like it has paint in it, see how full that is? And I tap it like this and nothing drips. My brush has lots of paint in it. And whenever your paint starts to feel like it's not moving, that it's a little too thick, or the brush feels dry. Again, no drip. There's nothing showing that there's a, a ball of liquid there. That's how you load it. So start with a small puddle, say three or four drops of glaze or water, and pull paint into it until you get this. If it starts, if I shake it like this and it forms a bulge or a drip on the brush, you can see there's a bulge there. It's too thin. So pull a little more paint into it. And there, no ball. And that's the trick, is getting that, if it's too thin, it's going to slide down off the brush. You want it to come off the brush, but you don't want it to slide off. So if it's too thin, it's going to form a drip. You see the drip? See how we've got a bulge of paint there? It's too thin. So I pull a little more paint in. And when I roll it, if I go like that, no bulge. So it does make a difference if you work. Take your time. You don't have to get it all done in one go. When this starts to feel a little thick, that it's not coming off the brush, just touch into your glaze and add a little back. Just a tiny drop. Test it. No bulge. So that load will give me all kinds of paint to work with. It needs to come off the brush, but you don't want it to run off the brush, if you know what I mean. So hopefully you guys find that helpful. I, it has worked for me for years to get that kind of control over the liquid. Line work is always a struggle if the paint is either too thin or it's too thick 
or the brush won't let it come off. A little bit of Josonia's Fast Dry and make yourself a puddle. You can always thin it out a little more if it gets too thick. You can always thicken it up if it gets too thin. So just take your time. Load it up. See? No drip. Easy peasy. Look like consistency. Yeah. So having said that, someone had asked me earlier this week in reference. I'm sorry, Nancy. I'm going to do it to you again. <laughs> um, somebody had asked me earlier this week about loading a brush to float. So let me quickly show you this. So this is one of my favorite tools for floating. Uh, some of you that have watched for a while already know this. This is uh, just a kitchen sponge, a cellulose kitchen sponge. So you're going to get that sponge wet. I'm going to get it really wet here. I'm just going to empty my spritzer into it. There we go. So this is just a little bit of water in here. Probably not enough, but it'll do. So we have a wet sponge and I squeezed the bulk of it out. So the sponge is just damp. It's not dripping. It's just damp. So we're going to put, well, let's use a little bit of well, a good shading color. We'll use a little of this green, this mystic teal, gorgeous green. And we're going to get the brush wet with a little bit of water first. I usually leave my brushes to soak for about three to five minutes before I'm going to use them. Just so that the, when the bristle is wet and you get some water up underneath the ferrule so the brush is actually ready to work. And then you're going to get the brush wet and you're going to touch it to the sponge both sides. What that does is it pulls off the excess moisture out of the brush so you should have just enough liquid in the brush to float with. So then you pick up a small quantity of paint on your brush and you're going to use the brush on both sides. Flip it back and forth and then walk the brush forward into that first stroke. Walk it forward and then walk it back out. So then you are ready to float. And when you float, put the whole chisel edge of the brush on the surface. Don't tip the brush up on its point, a whole chisel edge on the surface. And that will give you that nice gradient so that you get from dark to light. And you're not working on the point of the brush. I see people do this all the time. They roll the brush up onto the point. Use the whole chisel edge. Lay the whole chisel edge of the brush on the surface. And that way you'll get a nice transition and a nice smooth gradient of color. That's how I float. So hopefully that helps. A little bit of practice. You get really good at it. And after a while, you won't need the sponge because you'll be able to tell when you've got just the right amount of water in your brush. And that just comes with practice. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this piece. These little guys are so much fun to paint. Now, the, the surface for this is available on the website. It's the same surface that I use for the little, the roly-poly Santa. Now, the roly-poly Santa has the mustache, obviously, and the snowflake. Uh, but they are a really cute little set to do for the holidays. They make great little gifts and great little, they also make really fun gift tags. So uh, have some fun with them. If you're looking for this surface, you can find it on my website. You can also find it on paintingwithdepth.com. If you're looking for the stencil that I used, which is that swirly background, this is also available on my website. And it is also available on Sandy McTeer's website. So you can find it on hers too. And what else? Um, if you're on the website and you're already shopping, go and have a look. We got some really great new surfaces in. Um, next Saturday, we are painting 
country flower market, which <laughs> it, it took me a minute. Couldn't remember. I've got three weeks ahead, so I'm trying. It's actually behind you. It is. So we're doing country flower market next weekend, which is this right. little I got to switch the camera again. There we go. Boom. So this is the one we're doing. I love this one. I had the wheel up and everything. So. Yeah. So this one is a lot of fun. Uh, on camera, they don't look quite as bright as they really are because they are very bright and colorful. So this is the one we're doing next Saturday. The surface uh, with the butterfly and the surface without are both available on the website. So you can go and have a look. Um, I love this one. I did the bumblebee on this one, but you can do the butterfly too. And I, if I'm not mistaken, I have both in the both line drawings in the pattern. So this is a fun piece. So check that out. But we also got this postage stamp surface in a six by six that is so stinking cute. And I have four new designs coming for that. And we also got some ornaments in the little four by fours. They are so cute. Those? So I'm so excited about them. Is that so. for, from Deb? Yes. Paintingwithdeb.com, yeah. Yeah, so if you can't get it on our website. If uh, if they happen to be out of stock on mine, you can always get them on Deb's. I also see, uh, what is that, a... The ornaments? Four by four? It's a four by four with a little butterfly. So you have an eight by eight, a six by six, and a four by four. And an eight by ten. And an eight by ten. <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed with the postage stamp thing. I wonder why. I don't know goes with the postage the cancellation stamps I, <laughs> <laughs> I just i have this thing about the postage stamp thing these days but so come and join us next saturday 12 noon eastern standard time we're going to be painting country flower market oh brenda owen caught the welcome winter sign there oh this one yeah yeah that one is for an upcoming zoom class i'm teaching <laughs> <laughs> Linda says, Tracy, you're going to kill me. We'll be doing another order. <laughs> I'm having way too much fun. This is the thing. I can spend all my time designing. And when I have time to design, I'm just, I kind of, I kind of went on a bender here. <laughs> uh, yesterday I got seven. Margaret Davis, you need your own stencil company. She does. So I do have a stencil company. <laughs> 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 she does <laughs> m square stencils m square stencils it's hers yeah and sandy's and sandy's and sandy and i designed that yeah so yes uh the m square all of those square stencils these six by sixes that you see on my website those are all ours yeah <laughs> all right i got the wheel back <laughs> yes, up got the wheel back up so let me show you what you're getting this week because these are really cute um you're getting one of these be kind bags and inside the be kind bag or uh there's a surface in there there's a pin kit in there there's a stencil from the stencil studio in there there's uh, a couple of little fun items from us plus there's a three brush set of dynasty faux squirrel brushes and i see a tea bag and of course there's tea in it you have <laughs> to have your tea when you sit and you paint so yes yeah, so we have three of these going out to three of you you've been hanging out with sheila landry I love my Sheila. <laughs> You're a bad influence, Sheila. No, she's not. No. She's a very good influence. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm spinning for the first name. Yep. 213 names on there today. Nice. And we got somebody named Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Terry whom? T just Terry. Terry. Okay. Terry. <laughs> I, <laughs> hop on over to my website at tracymoreau.net and send us an email with your shipping information and your full name. <laughs> so we can get your goodies out to you as soon as possible. All right. Number two. We got Terry. Oh, Kathy Pruitt. Awesome, Miss Kathy. Kathy, I know where you live. Oh. <laughs> Could you not say that so Dahmer-esque? <laughs> <No. laughs> 
I'm just saying I I have Kathy's shipping information. So. I know where you live. <laughs> Denise Chavez is sending mental thoughts, trying to get a win. You need your own cancellation. I have a cancellation. <laughs> it's called Postal. I have one. And cancellation. Judy Stevens Armstrong. Awesome, Judy. So, Judy, make sure you hop onto the website and click on the little speech bubble in the lower right-hand corner of the screen and send us your shipping information, please, so we can get your goodies out to you. Here's all three. We got Terry, Kathy Pruitt, and Judy Stevens Armstrong. <laughs> Boom. Your papa. Well, guys, thanks so much for joining us today. This was a fast one and a fun one, and uh, I hope you enjoy it and that you uh, take a stab at making these roly-poly snowmen. They are a lot of fun, and they're so super cute when they're hanging on the tree or even in the window. They're just a, a lot of fun. So we've got a bunch of really cute and fun spring and summer projects coming up. Uh, we're doing the um, country flower market sign next Saturday. But the following Saturday, we're going to be doing some anemone. And it, <laughs> anemone is the name of the flower. It's a flower. It's a flower. Oh, right. We had this conversation. We did have this conversation. So we're going to be doing some, some very pretty anemone, some pink ones on a, a really nice background a dark blue honeycomb background i think you're going to enjoy i'm looking forward to that one um also keep an eye on the website We've got some fun stuff coming up we have zoom classes coming up uh that registration will be open for and there's a whole bunch of other things coming and a pile of new designs coming so thank you for coming to see us every saturday like you do and uh, if you're not subscribed to my youtube channel please do hit the big red subscribe button and then turn on your bell notification so that you know when we go live and when we have new video posted. And uh, if you are watching us on Facebook Live, please follow the page. We'd appreciate it very much. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for some fun stuff we've got coming up on the Tracy Morrow Live group. So if you're not a part of the uh, group page, hop on over and join us there. We've got lots of fun stuff that happen there as well. So... Everybody, have a great weekend. If you're in the path of this storm, please stay safe. Hunker down, get your storm chips, and call it a day and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Mwah! We love you. Stay safe. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> and pet your dog. And pet your dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're muted. <laughs>